Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. The windows let the afternoon sun shine in. Phil and Sarah laid down next to each other on the bed to relax. After a long silence, Candy spoke to Phil. Phil, would you mind if I moved in? We've been going out for about six or seven months. Think about how much money we'd save on my apartment's rent. We could easily save enough money for a down payment on a house. Phil looked at her without any feelings. She kept going. Well, then do you not think it's a good idea? I don't always think you love me. I really like you, that's all. What is it? Just that I want to be alone. There is a lot of room here. I mean, there's plenty of room for both of us here. Still, you have that spare room that you never use and always lock. But then what? You don't want me here, do you? Don't you have fun with me? She had a sneaky look in her eye. I, I would love for you to move in with me, of course. But I think there's something you should know before we decide what to do. Something I haven't told you about myself. Something I could tell you that would probably make you not want to move in with me. Sarah's turn to be quiet had come. Her mind was full of thoughts. Was he married already? Or was someone else there? Did he have a really bad illness? What terrible secret did he have? Phil's hair on the back of his neck stood on end. He was breathing quickly and had tingling in the palms of his hands. He would not like this one bit. He had decided a long time ago, though, that he had to tell Sarah. He just didn't know when. Sarah, you see, I like to wear clothes that women wear. I'm a cross-dresser. He waited for his girlfriend to respond, but she didn't, so he went on. I don't know why I do it. I don't want to be a woman and change my gender. I just want to dress like a woman sometimes. I only know that it makes me feel good, that it calms me down and gives me a rush. Still, Sarah's face didn't change, so Phil went on with his speech. It helps me calm down when I'm feeling worried. I don't know when I began, most likely when I was about 16 years old. Since then, I've changed my clothes about twice a week. Sometimes all I wear under my male clothes is my nylons. I wear the whole outfit sometimes. I sometimes do what I call the full Monty, which includes clothes, makeup, a wig, and everything else. Oh, I've had times when I got rid of all my things and swore I wouldn't do it again, but I always do. Candy sleeps in the spare room, which I keep locked. That's where I keep my clothes, body shapers, wigs, makeup, and jewelry that I wear as a woman. Everything is there. I go there to put on clothes. Before Sarah moved in, I had to tell her. I can't give it up because it's a part of my life. Sarah was still lying there without moving and staring at Phil. She was in her mind. She had to take in a lot. So Sarah, do you still want to move in? Phil asked. To live with a man who wears a dress? Sarah took a bite. She didn't answer the question, but she said, it's hard to picture you in a dress. Do you want, do you want to see me get dressed? Sarah gave a nod. Now? Sarah gave another nod. Okay, Phil knew that Sarah had to see him as a woman in order to accept him and his lifestyle. He knew there was no way to hide. He got up, walked to his closet, and put on his robe. Then he went to the bathroom and shaved his face. He went back to the bedroom to find Candy's room's key. Sarah had put back on her clothes. She said, I'm sure it will take you forever to get ready. Does it bother you if I watch? Phil didn't think this would happen, but he wasn't in the mood to fight. His mind was all over the place. He was excited about getting dressed, happy that he had told Sarah and she hadn't left right away like his last girlfriend, Michelle, and worried that she might still leave. He felt weak, vulnerable, and unsure of what the future held. You can do what you want, but just sit still. He went out into the hallway and opened Candy's door. Sarah went in with him. She was shocked by the room's decorations, which included pink wallpaper, a blanket cover with flowers, and flounces around the bed's base. Really girly. There was a dresser, a closet, and a chest of drawers. On the chest were three heads made of styrofoam. Each head had a different color wig on it, jet black, blonde, and chestnut brown. Sarah could just see a few different clothes hanging through the closet door, which was just a little bit open. As she sat on the bed, she thought, Christ, 
He must have spent a lot of money on all this. Where did he get everything? Sarah was very interested. Then Phil put on a pair of black nylons with lace on them. Then he found a black top and tied it around his body. He breathed in so he could tie it around his waist. Sarah was surprised by how quickly his body started to look like a woman's. He fastened the suspenders' clasps and awkwardly looked back to make sure his seams were straight. Phil picked the blonde wig and put it on while Sarah was still watching. Sitting at the vanity, it seemed to take him a long time to get it just right. After a couple of sprays of hairspray, he moved on to the bright red nail polish. Care was taken to paint each fingernail. When Phil was sure that his nail polish was dry, he put on foundation, blush, mascara, a lot of eyeliner, and then ruby red lipstick. Phil was proud of how well he could put on makeup, and Sarah, who could only see the back of his blonde head, couldn't wait to see the results. Phil knew this, so when he was done with his face, he didn't look around. Instead, to keep the tension going, he got up and moved sideways to the closet. He opened the door wide and pretended to look at some clothes, but he already knew what he was going to wear. He took out his favorite little black dress, took it off the hanger, and put it on while hiding his face from his lover. The stretchy material of the dress made Phil's new curves stand out. He bent down and found a pair of black heel shoes as carefully as he could without showing his face. When he stood up straight, he put them on. He had worn these shoes a lot, so it was easy for him to walk over to the dressing table and add the finishing touches. A gold watch on one hand, three bracelets on the other, a simple necklace and clip-on earrings. With a quick spray of perfume, he was ready. As Phil got ready to face Sarah, he had never been more scared. He needs something strong to drink. More than ever, his hands were getting tingly. Still, a girl has to do what she has to do. He wanted to make it seem like this person was very different from who he really was. He told himself to be sure. He took a deep breath and did a graceful spin, turning around 180 degrees. He smiled wide and hoped it didn't look too fake. Hi, I'm Candy, he said in a soft but confident voice. Surely you are Sarah. Sarah said, Wow, you look beautiful. That was right. Candy was very pretty. She wore all black and had blonde hair that reached her shoulders. The dress looked great on her, and she didn't show any signs of being a man. She had to make it seem like this was completely normal. Let's drink some tea, shall we? She gave an idea. Sarah nodded, and Candy walked out of the room and into the kitchen, while Sarah followed her with small steps in her high heels. After 10 minutes, they were having a cup of tea in the living room. She wanted to look girly without being too sweet. She didn't need to worry. Sarah was too nice to say or even notice anything. She was still trying to figure out how her boyfriend had become this stunning beauty. Still, she wasn't sure if she could do it. Everything had happened too quickly. She liked him as Phil, but what about his candy? Could she handle him moving around the apartment in a dress and high heels? Candy asked Sarah the same question she'd already asked. Do you still want to move in? I'm not sure because everything has happened so quickly. Sarah said, give me some time to think about it. Candy sat in her living room and drank tea. She was very pretty with blonde hair that reached her shoulders and a short black dress with amazing legs. The person sitting next to Candy wore a faded t-shirt and pants. This was a little strange because Candy looked like a girl, but she was really Phil, a guy who had just told his girlfriend, Sarah, that he dresses as a woman. Sarah was still trying to figure out what was going on. Do you want me to go back to the way I was? Candy had to ask her. What are your plans? Sarah didn't say yes or no in her answer. I'm fine with it, but she was unsure. Then what? Well, you shouldn't wear that dress if you want to stay dressed as candy. It's a dress for the evening, and you should be in something more casual, like wearing jeans and a top, or perhaps a skirt and a top. Sarah might have just been too picky. At the end of the day, people could wear what they wanted when they wanted, and candy seemed to be live proof of that. Sarah really wanted to see what else candy had to wear. After all, she had to be interested. Candy wasn't upset. Her feet were already hurting from the stilettos, and her suspenders weren't exactly made for comfort. 
Yes, you might be right. I should go get changed. She stood up and walked out. Sarah thought about going with them. Which bedroom would she change in? Who would she be? Candy or Phil? Sarah asked herself which version of her boyfriend she wanted, but she didn't know the answer. She was curious about his small habit. She couldn't stand to wait. Sarah thought it wouldn't be Phil because Candy hadn't come back in five minutes. Even when they have to take off nail polish and makeup, men never take that long. On the other hand, women... Candy was being slow. No one was in a hurry. What was Sarah's idea? Candy looked through her closet until she found a denim skirt with front buttons that she liked. Not too short, but not as long as the dress she was wearing. She found nylons in natural colors, shoes with only a two-inch heel, and a shirt that looked good on her. She saw the dark brown wig and thought it would finish off her look. After a few minutes, she was dressed, had put on a little more makeup, and was looking at herself in the full-length mirror. Perfect she thought in an arrogant way. Sarah was happy to see Candy again. Then Candy did her normal Saturday afternoon chores of dusting and vacuuming to show how normal it was. Sarah was surprised by how relaxed Candy looked as she cleaned the house. Did she do it in a skirt every time? Sarah said, Candy, as her friend dusted a bookcase. Is your, known to anyone else, your pastime? No, unless, besides who? A girl I used to know, she was called Michelle. I told her when she got serious about it, and I lost her. They left. Since then, I haven't seen her, and you've never gone out dressed as a woman? No way. But once I dressed up as a St. Trinian's girl and went to a costume party, I didn't go then. So what happened? The bottle wasn't with me. I might have thought I looked too real. You know, someone might have thought I was like that, but that's how you are. Yes. I know, but I didn't want them to know that I was like that. Sarah gave a nod. She tried to picture Candy in a uniform as she said, so I'm the only one who's seen you as Candy. Candy agreed. After a short pause, Sarah said, Candy, I have to go to Sainsbury's this afternoon. Why don't you come with me? If you want to dress like that, you have to be ready to go out like that. Oh, you can say that so easily. You'll be wearing jeans, but I'll be walking through the grocery store with a skirt. Come on, you didn't have to wear that skirt. Sarah used her best move. I'll wear a skirt too if you come with me, I promise. Candy's face turned into a half smile. Phil had been trying for months to get Sarah to wear skirts, but to no avail. You don't have any skirts though, you have though. Can I use one of yours for a while? I think it will work. This would be useful in two ways. First, it might make Candy want to go out, and second, it would let Sarah look in Candy's closet, which she was very interested in. Candy had some thoughts. I agree. Pay attention. You'll need a car. I can't take the chance that the cops will pull me over and look at my license. At the store, you say everything. If we see someone we know, you just say hello and don't say anything else. We go there right away and come back right away. Okay? We agree. Can I go and get dressed? Sarah went to the pink room while Candy nodded. She was excited about putting on a short skirt. She had already agreed in her mind to do what Phil wanted, but she hadn't bought one yet. She didn't have to buy one anymore. She opened the closet door and saw a lot of clothes. There was the outfit Candy had talked about for St. Trinian's Day, a dress for a maid and a suit for a nurse. Sarah looked for five minutes before she chose a light blue top and a black skirt. She found a pair of black nylons in the top drawer and quickly sat down at Candy's dressing table to put on Candy's blonde wig. Then she put Candy's makeup on her face for almost 15 minutes. She was not going to let her boyfriend put her down. She looked in Candy's jewelry box and found a collar and a bracelet. 10 minutes later, she came out a different person. Not for the first time today, Candy was getting worried. Even before her partner showed up, she was already sorry she had said yes to Sarah. When Candy saw the second change of the day, she couldn't believe it. Sarah was just as good looking as Candy. They left the apartment without anyone seeing. Candy always felt like a thousand eyes were on her. She was sure she saw a net curtain move, but they were soon in Phil's car where they were safe. Candy was glad to hear that. Sarah drove and they parked as close to the store as they could. No one paid much attention to them. They were just two girls going to the store. 
One young man was interested in them, but there was no trouble. The longer they stayed, the happier Candy got. She was so happy with herself, and Sarah felt the same way. They rolled the cart back to the car, and Candy realized she didn't have to lift the bags into the trunk like the man did. She was afraid that if she bent over, she might be doing something wrong. Sarah wasn't very tall, so she didn't have to bend over as far. In any case, she had done this more. Soon they were back in the car and safe. Sarah was looking at Candy. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for taking me. I had a great time. I liked giving you a ride. Candy got close to Sarah and kissed. Yes, yes, I want to move in with you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.